An epic story begins in a very humble way, coming up on the Accessible Faith Project. Hi there, I'm John and welcome to the Accessible Faith Project. If you're new here and looking for insights into the Bible, faith and history and ways that engage your brain, then please hit subscribe and that little bell icon so you receive a notification every time I upload a new video. As we continue social distancing, I've been using the Accessible Faith Project to provide worship and devotional resources in addition to my educational videos. This is one of those. We've missed a lot of things this year, at least when it comes to big events. The Tokyo Olympics postponed until 2021. The Calgary Stampede in my hometown canceled. Sporting events canceled or modified so that teams play without crowds. And this week saw the cancellation of the entire 2020 season of the Canadian Football League. Places where large groups of people gather now stand quietly with only the echoes of past epic events to fill them. They only hold a promise of future spectacle, but we aren't there yet. Compare that to the opening notes of Exodus, the original big budget epic. Although some of the stories from Genesis have a very cosmic scale, Exodus has all the themes that make it work. There will be special effects of a spectacular nature. There will be a cast of thousands. There will be a sweeping tale that tells the forging of a new nation. There will be the cry for freedom answered by the living God. But notice I say, there will be. It's a promise of something more, but it's not there yet. It's the anticipation of the story of something to come. But even in these opening words, the real power of the story is just a hint. Now, we're not going to get through the whole story today. We're not there yet. But the way Exodus sets things up, the way it draws us in, is a reminder that we too are part of God's ongoing story. We are part of God's ongoing promise. We recognize what God has already done. But at its best, these stories remind us that God continues to be with us now and that God's promise is a promise for the future and for hope. And we are very much a part of that. The opening of Exodus is simply a moment in the story that reminds us that there is much more to come. After all, it's been leading to this point and puts us on the road to the promised land, but it's still all about God's promise. Exodus is a story about new life, drawn out of the jaws of death. It is the story of God's powerful interaction and intervention against the powers that be who oppress their fellow human beings in the name of us being somehow better than them. As the story opens, it recalls the story of Joseph, the youngest son of Jacob. In jealousy, his brothers cast him out, selling him as a slave to live in exile in Egypt. And through a series of circumstances and a lot of God's grace, he became an advisor to Pharaoh himself. And Joseph had given such wisdom to Pharaoh that they avoided the ravages of famine. And as it would happen, during the famine, his strange brothers came seeking help. Joseph was reconciled to his brothers and gave them shelter and a home in Egypt. And it was a good and healthy relationship, two cultures living side by side. And from what we understand, they did so peacefully for several generations, and in their time, the population grew. But as Exodus opens, things have changed. The people have become quite numerous. The story begins with the words, Now a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. Things changed, and not for the better. The Israelites, the children of Joseph and his brothers, came to Egypt to escape a famine. And welcomed initially as guests, they found themselves resented as foreigners and squatters with a strange religion. Treated with fear and contempt, the local Egyptians worried that these foreigners would take over. So what did the Egyptians do? Like every nation with a large population of immigrants, they exploited them for cheap labor. Of course, at this point in history, labor laws did not exist, and they wouldn't even exist for several thousand years. There was no respect for individual rights or what constituted fair and just practices. These refugees and immigrants were put to work to earn their keep and put in a place where Egyptians could keep an eye on them. And over several generations, this would develop into a system of organized oppression and forced labor, a system where these foreigners became a driving engine in the economy and the power of the land. To let them go 
could mean a critical labor shortage and a collapse of the economy. And so while Egyptians became resentful of the people they once called welcome guests, they couldn't let them go because they needed them. It's incredible how some things change very little over thousands of years. When I read this, I heard the echoes of immigration debates in both Canada and the United States in recent decades. The same arguments are there even thousands of years later. And we may need to reread Exodus from this point of view the next time we listen to our own immigration debates. The fear of the foreigner or the outsider can lead to some very unjust, unfair and oppressive policies and practices all of which did not end well for the Egyptians. After this initial setup, Exodus identifies with those who are on the receiving end of this fear and suspicion. This nation of immigrants had taken on that derogatory name that the Egyptians and others had given them and turned it into their sense of identity, Hebrew. And yet, putting them under forced labor was not enough. Making their life harsh for them was not enough. The fear of these immigrants grew to the point where the Egyptian king, Pharaoh, stirred up his people to commit genocide, to slaughter children. It is into this hostile environment that a boy is born to the Hebrews. And he doesn't have a name, at least a name that we know. And for three months, his mother hides him until a point where she can no longer do it. With a torn heart, she places him into a watertight basket and sets him amongst the reeds of the river. The boy's rescuer is an unlikely source, Pharaoh's daughter. Ignoring her father's orders when she finds the boy, she adopts him as her own, calling him Moses. And so the stage is set, and there's so much more to come. A story that draws us into a promising potential, but we aren't there yet. When I was in university, I remember one comment from my Shakespeare professor that stuck with me. He said that the best stories draw upon a story that went on before and conclude with a hint of a story yet to come. In Exodus, God is going to do something incredible. In this chapter, God's role seems to be more of a bit player rather than a prime mover, but that's the part that draws us in. Our story with God is also constantly unfolding, always pointing us to something new, the next chapter, the next thing. God drives the story forward, and for us, that's no different. Last week, I spoke about the experience of the exiles. Isaiah proclaimed a new exodus where the people of Israel would be restored and God was doing something beyond their imagination. It's appropriate that we go back to the original exodus and realize that God's story has been unfolding throughout history. In this part of the story, hope is hinted at by a child whose name means drawn from the water, which as the story is told, we realize that his name is far more prophetic. As a people who were once called outcasts eventually become a nation themselves, God draws them to this new nationhood from the water. We continue to be a part of God's ongoing story, no matter if we gather in person or do so digitally. It doesn't make any sense for us to say that God is somehow less active than in the time of Exodus, because that would be placing some limits on where God is. I'd say we've become less attuned to where we see God at work. Maybe it's because we're looking for something big and spectacular like burning bushes or parting waters that we miss the more common and yet no less profound moments that are a part of our everyday lives. As epic as Exodus is, it still begins with the story of a small baby, something that we can all relate to, and with this child, a promise of hope. So even now, God is doing something wonderful. Are we going to be part of it? Amen.